this is an Echo CS271T. It's, I guess, their entry level uh, top handle saw. Issue we got today on this one is no compression, so more than likely there's some carnage going on. And this is going to be a teardown, so the video will be a little bit longer. This is just demonstrating it has no compression. You can pull on the rope and it will not pick itself up. Um, I don't think I've ever tore one of these down before all the way. So this is going to be a new one for me. Let's get started with the basics. Everything takes simple tools to take off. Gonna knock off of here. Chain brake cover. Uh, this is a unit from a tree service. They use it pretty heavily. Uh, mainly when they're uh, trying to cut down stuff on a trailer. Uh, bigger branches and whatnot. It's already been put on a trailer. Try and knock it apart for transport looks like we got some Phillips screws on here not sure if I have my Phillips bit so might be taking this all apart with hand tools for the first little bit here I bet I can scrounge around and find a Phillips bit. Hold on just a minute. Couldn't find a bit, but I did find a screwdriver, so that's the next best thing. Always like to pull the covers off of stuff first because it gives me a parts tray. It's kind of why I like working on saws and need small handheld equipment because yeah, you don't have stuff scattered all over the place I can work on them on a little tabletop and it's not an issue uh, kind of a neat hobby if it's something if you like engines but you don't have a whole lot of space Like I said, this is a tree service. Their equipment gets pretty dirty pretty fast. Um, if this gets rebuilt, it will be cleaned up a whole lot better. Checking for play in the crankshaft. On these, uh, I believe they're a clamshell build, style build. If you can rock the flywheel forward and back, along this axis of the machine probably a good indication that the bottom end loosened up <clears throat> but that doesn't appear to be the problem today but this handle is going to need to come off you have two screws over here that mount to the air filter housing and carburetor housing kind of pay attention to your screws if uh, in the locations where they're at if you have some that are extra long you want to make sure those go back in the same place you can cause damage on some of these machines with screws that are too long screws that are too short just aren't going to hold as well and you'll know, run the risk of stripping out Uh, stripping out the hole that they're in, not stripping the threads off of the screw itself. This one, I th yep, I can just rotate the handle out of the way. <clears throat> Air filter, not terrible, not great. Um, these don't have the best air filter system, but it works. And it looks like almost all of this is uh, this Phillips. Well, not 
technically these aren't Phillips, they're JIS screws. Uh, that's Japanese industrial standard, but a Phillips screwdriver fits in there if you don't have your JIS drivers on you. I'll leave the plug in there kind of till last. Uh, just helps prevent any uh, any more debris from ending up in the motor if you do reuse the cylinder or you know, misdiagnosed it from the start. These screws have a smaller head on them. These are the ones for the, uh, the muffler cover. So I will set these with the muffler cover. Your other option is to thread them back in the hole they came out of. Since this is part of the frame, you know, we're not going to need to we're not going to need to remove these screws to remove the engine if they're just threaded into the frame. bust these muffler bolts loose run them out and that'll give us a view of the cylinder or not a view of the cylinder but a view of the piston on the exhaust side on this one somehow the catalytic converters or the catalyst is rattled loose so that muffler rattles around Turn the motor over with the flywheel. Top of the top of the piston is scored. It's got some wear on this exhaust side. looks like the engine is going to come out on this side so I can probably leave the coil and flywheel on but this wire needs to get disconnected top cover needs to get pulled off there should be two more bolts under here that hold the uh, that hold the engine in place if I had a compressed air first thing I would have done is probably pull all the covers off and blow this unit out because it's pretty dirty you know, it's amazing how sawdust can work itself into these covers. This clutch is wore out. Let me try and get a view of this. You can see it's got a groove war in it from the brake band. Uh, definitely needs a new clutch drum. Just so your clutch brake will, your chain brake will function correctly. That's a fairly significant <coughs> safety hazard Let's 
Still no play on the crank in this side. Gonna have to knock this clutch off somehow. Do I have anything that will function as a punch? Got a rod over here. Hopefully it's not on too tight. And this engine isn't building a whole lot of compression, so I might not be able to knock it off this way. Majority of clutches are counterclock or clockwise to loosen, counterclockwise to tighten. It's the opposite of lefty loosey, righty tighty. So uh, what I'm going to do here, if I'll catch it on camera, take a punch, get on an area of that clutch, and I'm going to smack it with a hammer. Hopefully, that sharp impact will be enough to break it loose. And it was. Had to do it a few times, but that's how you get the clutch off if you don't have the proper tools for it. Always use a punch that'll deform. Uh, you can see the end is all beat up on this thing because it's a soft metal. I don't know what this rod is, but it's soft. It didn't, you know, mar up the clutch too bad. You can see there's a little hickey there, but that's nothing compared to if you would have used a hardened steel punch. Probably time to replace clutch springs on this as well. They heat up, they age, and then they kind of lose their temper. Uh, and then they don't function properly. There isn't wear on the inside of this clutch drum. Definitely wear on the outside of it. Stick your needle bearing with your sprocket and clutch parts. This is the oil pump on this unit. Uh, this is the drive gear. Or it's the driver of the drive gear. Drive gear sits a little further back in here. That one pulled out just fine. Again, checking the crank for play. It doesn't appear that it's got any play in it. There's a washer. And thankfully there's no circlip in there because I don't have my circlip pliers. From here, almost looks like I can remove the engine. We're gonna try and do that. I'm gonna fish this plug wire. Actually, I'm not gonna fish the whole wire through there. Uh, I'm gonna remove the plug boot because this is probably gonna hang out, hang up in that hole. Uh, yeah, you want to stick something in there, not tear up the boot, but you definitely want to see whatever is uh, causing it to you want to unseat whatever is causing it to stick in place every now and then a little bit of oil helps uh, could potentially cause your plug boot to swell but they're cheap enough to replace if you do run into that scenario so old tips in my forceps uh, forceps hemostats whatever you prefer to call them just digging around in there. Uh, gonna leave that oiled up. See if I can get the plug boot to rotate. If you can get the plug boot to rotate, you can usually slide it off at that point. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to put a drop of oil in this end.
poke around in there. You don't want to tear it. If you tear it, then you for sure are going to go in and need a new one. But a little lubrication on that spring that retains the boot. Now it's now it's wanting to rotate. The plug wire stays in place, the boot wobbles around, pulled right off. You keep your spring with the boot. Just stick it in there a ways. Uh, that way you don't lose it. Fish the wire through <clears throat> like we originally planned on doing. Going to take this plug loose. Oh, I'm skipping a huge part. I have to remove the intake side of the motor, so I'll just take the plug loose. Start pulling out the carburetor and the intake parts. Again, this is the first time I've taken one of these apart. It's a dumb mistake, but uh, it's just me getting ahead of myself. Most of the time, the Echoes use two real long screws to mount the carburetor to whatever intake mounting body. just stuck from being seated up against uh, rubber so long have to figure out how to remove this throttle rod it looks like it's just a 90 I think most of the top handles are just a 90 car popped out pretty easily uh, these fuel lines are pretty soft and they're they look damp with fuel, so more than likely we're going to put some lines in this thing um, if the customer wants to proceed with that. Um, these are not the most expensive top handle, so if the cost of repairs exceeds I mean, if the cost of repairs it exceeds or approaches the cost of a new one, uh, pretty easy to say you're going that route. I like to check to see if any of these bolts are loose. Uh, it could just, it's worth checking because if you, if an air leak killed the motor and you put the same carburetor on it and the air leak was in the carb, if you rebuild it, you're going to kill the motor all over again. So you definitely don't want to do that. And in here, you can look down and see the piston. This one. This is a piston ported motor. Echo, I don't think, has too many reed saws left. CS303, I think, is still a reed saw, but I'm not... I'm not for certain, don't quote me on that. A little bit of visible wear on the intake side of the piston. We'll, uh, we'll take a look at that when we get this thing apart. This is your support ring for your intake. You don't want to forget about that guy when you go to put it, put the thing back together. Uh, your intake will kind of collapse on you. And you're not going to have a very good time. From here, what I'm doing, that you can't see, is pushing the intake boot through the housing that it's seated in. It's uh, yeah, it's not something that wants to move. Uh, it's designed to stay in place, so it's gonna 
fight with you a little bit. Let's try taking these mounting bolts out. They're flatheads. If we take these uh, anti-vibe mounts out, the handle may tip forward. It's just a guess based on working on other top handles. Yeah, but it might be able to tip the handle forward far enough that <clears throat> I can remove my intake boot bolts cooling fins are surprisingly clean on this motor everything else is pretty dirty but at least those are clean this is some sort of uh, rubber boot that runs into the oil tank I think it's a vent I know if that is missing this thing will drain oil all down the side of the saw and make a huge mess so if your echo top handle is leaking pull your starter cover off and look right here if you don't have that little rubber piece in there you should probably go to the dealer get a new one now I'm kind of doing a double action here lifting up on that handle while pushing in on that boot everything popped loose now I get to take the bolts loose Mount the motor, undo the plug, uh, take the bolts loose that mount the intake. These handles, I try to avoid taking these handles apart if possible. The, there's throttle linkage, stuff with this trigger. They can be a pain to get to line up properly again. So I always try to avoid taking that handle apart. Save you a lot of time if you're in a shop situation. A little bit of pressure on the intake boot. This is your impulse line. It's molded into the boot, so the carburetor's still running on an impulse line. You got one drilled into your crankcase, molded into the boot. That's how it's picking up the vacuum of the vacuum and pressure pressurization of the crankcase. <clears throat> Another decent thing about taking a video of this while I'm doing it is once it's all posted, if I forgot where something goes, say this ground here, how all this was tucked in, I can go back and watch the video and see where everything's supposed to be. Might not have the best, might not have the best view. You gotta remember the longer longer engine mounting bolts go on the bottom. I'm thinking this thing just presses out through the side here. Hoping that it doesn't have anything underneath that flywheel that I'm missing. Um uh, that's that's just gonna be in the case. The oil pump may be holding it in place. That oil pump might not just be, uh, it might be mounted to the motor and not just to the case. 
of the saw. Someone got home, got the dog all upset. There we go. Like I said, these are JIS screws. Uh, and this is a Phillips, so it's pretty sloppy. I don't know if that's something you can see, but I got about an eighth or sixteenth of a turn in there. Doesn't help that everything in that screw is just filthy. Clean it out a little bit better. Might get. Didn't help it that well. Those are machine screws. Pretty good chance to set in metal. Yep, that oil pump was holding it in. Looks like this crank seal might have been leaking. That's interesting. Yep, there we go. Now the engine's popping out. Here's the motor. Um, surprisingly clean on the bottom end. That's not a good thing judging by the rest of the condition of the saw. Probably means something back here is loosened up or started leaking. This crank seal is real wet. Uh, that could have been leaking fuel. It looks more like fuel wet rather than oil wet. Well, let's crack it open, see what we got. Yep, that was very loose. You notice that bolt didn't crack. Uh, it just completely gave way. Let's see if see how bad this one is. Just an impact bit in my hands. Oh, not that, not quite that loose. But I bet it does not take a significant amount of effort to undo any of these. Yeah, that was very, very loose. That one's very, very loose. That was the only one that cracked when I was trying to pull it apart. So I'm guessing it probably had a lean condition developed by a leak in the crankcase. <clears throat> if this bottom piece of the crankcase is easy to separate, more than likely our gasket is compromised and there was an air leak somewhere. Uh, yeah, that was very easy to separate. I used a very small screwdriver to pry on it. Bottom of the case is not terribly dry. I mean, it's fairly dry. There's fuel all over the face side of these seals. Looks like it was sucking air here. I didn't mark which direction this was. This came off of. Um, I think it was like this. So there's no sealant left on this surface. And there's no sealant left right here. There's minimal left around the whole thing, um, but I'm gonna guess this was this had a vacuum leak that 
weren't aware of. And piston is super clean. Scored up all around. It's fairly unique as crank stuffers. I guess that's their attempt at a full circle crank. But it's a uh, you know, I would I would consider that a crank stuffer, not a full circle crank, because I think the, the crank has to be a you know one piece there. <clears throat> Still had oil on top of it, but that piston's chewed up. That ring is really squared off. Top of the piston looks okay. This is all stuff that's in rough shape, and you know, the cylinder bore is tore up pretty bad. The uh, this is pretty strange as well. Looks like the coil overheated at some point in time because I don't know if that's going to pick up on video. But the body of the coil is loose from the armature. That's the first time I've seen that. Um, that's probably a good sign. Timing was way off on this as well. View at the transfers. Those are got a pretty good area for you know fuel and air to get into. That side not quite as much, but everything is all kind of cattywampus in there. As far as how your intake and exhausts line up, everything's off center. You know, but from where you think it would be but i am call that a video uh, get a parts list together for my customer and uh, figure out what he wants to do um, at this point an ignition coil a cylinder and a piston that's probably going to be pretty close to the price of a whole new saw uh, so that's how you tear apart a 271T.